Hi, my name is Lin Nguyen. In this video, I'll be going over how to create a key brush for Photoshop. So what type of key am I talking about? I'm talking about a key for a keyboard. Uh, I made this demo a few years back while I was lecturing at the Academy of Art University, and one of the students was trying to texture a low-poly keyboard, you know, attempting to hand paint every single key by hand. Um, so I told him, there's a better way to do it, and to create a brush in Photoshop would be one of the best. He then asked, how do you even make a brush in Photoshop? So I decided, let's why not make this a video tutorial. So here we go. We file new. I set my resolution to 256 pixels by 256 pixels with uh, 72 pixels per inch. Uh, this is used for texture on screen, so 72 pixels per inch is pretty standard. Um, the size of this is essentially how large a brush can be before it starts to pixelate any uh, anymore. So meaning if I decide to make my brush any larger than 256, you know, you're going to get some sort of blurring or pixelation. So I'm using 256 by 256 because um, I don't see a purpose to really having a much larger resolution for my brush currently. But if you're planning to work on like a film or something that uh, might be displayed on IMAX, you might want to make a much larger brush. I'm keeping mine simple. So let's look okay. So first of all, I always recommend people when before creating anything is to look at a lot of references. Uh, the keyboard is easy because everyone has one and you can look at it. Um, personally at home right now I have a Mac uh, Pro keyboard so it looks quite different from a PC keyboard but I've made the PC keyboard key several times uh, so I'll be making that instead. So I'm going to start off by making a new layer. I simply don't like working on the background layer. Alright, so uh, first off with the key um, I would think is, uh, think of the depth and essentially usually anything that is further back is a darker color uh, or a tint than what is in the front and most brushes and brushes are also grayscale so I'm not going to worry about any other color other than black and white so with that being said I'm gonna my first goal is to get it to be dark on all the sides here and lighter in the center it might look strange at the beginning but I'll start adding up and uh, look a lot more realistic by the time we're done so I'm gonna go to the gradient tool right here and I'm going to choose uh, the last one right here it looks like a diamond but if you use a diamond on at an angle it'll create a gradient that's a square based and next I want to also make sure uh, I can find the center of this image if uh, you don't have your rulers showing on the sides here press control R and the rulers will show up that being said I'm going to click on the ruler and just drag it across and uh, it'll also know exactly when you get to the center it'll have a little snapping that we see right there. We'll click and drag this down and we'll find the center point. This helps us to make sure that everything we create will be perfectly centered. So I'm going to go back to my gradient tool now. Clicking from the center, I'm going to find out how my gradient works. I want to make sure um, it is darker on the sides than it is in the center. I always recommend people understanding the tool and how it works prior to actually using it. Let's see how this works. I'm going to hold shift now which locks it to going either up, down, left, or right, or at a 45 degree um, angle. So with that, I'm just pulling straight to the corner and see how it looks. And based on this, I can tell that the foreground color is the center color, and the background color is the background, um, is on the sides right here. You can either invert the color right now, or simply change your colors, it's up to you. So if you were to change your colors, you simply just click and drag it out again, and see how it looks like. Um, right now I can, I'm can i looking at this and white could be a bit harsh uh, of a color for this. I'm going to dim this down to more like a gray. Some of you are wondering, why don't you just use levels? Well, if you use levels, there's always a chance that you're stretching out the gradient between um, black and white. And if you, get the, uh, if you do that, you might get a banding effect. So I like to avoid having any of those slight issues. Let's do this lighter gray. Uh, more of a gray. Let's do that again. And there we go. Okay, so with that being said, I have the darks on the sides now and the lighter center. Although this doesn't look like a key, it looks more like a pyramid looking directly at you. That's perfectly fine. Like I said, we're just taking steps until we get to what we need. Uh, next, I'm going to add a new layer. 
Now you can either click on the little paper down here or just uh, my favorite shortcut, Control Shift N. Now you see a new dialog like this pop up. I'll click OK. And uh, if you're really organized, you can go through and actually name all these things. But I'm kind of lazy when it comes to that, so I'm not going to concern myself with that. Next is the Marquee tool. I'm going to click on this. The shortcut, if you just mouse over, it tells you it's the letter M. So just use that. Next, I want to make a square in the center, dictating how uh, large my actual uh, key from the top is. So I'm going to click from the center here, hold Alt and Shift and drag out. This allows me to make a perfect square scaling out from the center. Let's pull it up to. Uh, this looks okay. Next thing you want to do is round out the corners because these keys are a bit sharp right now. Um, there are several ways you can do this. Either you could have used a rounded corner type of rectangle tool to start with, or um, what I like to do is with my marquee selection, I go to Refine Edge. When I go over here, this lets me see a preview of how round my corners will be uh, after I'm done. So if you bring up your smooth, it starts rounding out your corner for uh, your box a lot. And it looks a little bit feathered, so increase your contrast. And this will make it a sharper round corner. And this gives you a little bit more of interactive feedback than if you were to use the um, round right corner uh, square. Because if you're using the other one, you might have to find out the exact radius first. That's why I'm just kind of eyeing it. So I think this will be OK. With that, I'll just click OK. Now I have a nice rounded uh, square selection. And I'm just going to fill this with um, any color I want, really. Um, this right here, I'm going to use a selection. So I'm going to use Alt Backspace, which fills uh, the selection with uh, the current selection. So Alt Backspace. There we go. And I'm just using this here as a selection type. Um, yes, I know I can create a path and use my paths to create my selection, but I find that to be a bit slower than I want simply because it requires me to click on this tab over here. So that being said, I can always control click on my current layer in the little icon here and it'll convert that image into the selection. So I'm just going to hide that, make a new layer here. And uh, I'm going to use a gradient because most keys aren't completely flat, uh, unless they're chiclet keys or whatever. Um, but if you look at a, P a standard PC keyboard, this is a slight indentation or raise. Depending on which one you're using, your color choice might be a little bit different. So based on the theory I used earlier, whatever is coming toward you is lighter and whatever is going away is a bit darker. I'm going to make the center area here darker and lighter on the sides here. So back to the gradient tool. I'm using this one right here, reflected gradient. That allows me, if I click in the center here and drag out, to make a gradient of some sort. Right now mine is the opposite of what I want. So I'm, this time instead of recreating my gradient, I'm just going to invert it. And uh, that gives me the gradient I need. The colors right now are incredibly harsh, but that's fine. What I'm going to do next is apply a levels to see the color range I really do want, and then recreate my gradient based off of that. So, another trick, if I hold control click right in here, and let me just tear this off so it's a little bit easier for you watching videos to see what I'm clicking on. I'm going to click on this little button here, which allows me to apply an adjust adjustment layer. Because I have a certain selection, it will automatically apply a quick mask to it. So I'm going to go to Levels. Let's add that right inside, and here's a new window that pops up. I want to find out what the darkest color I want is by dragging this in here. I'm going to change the drop off of my actual gradient this way too. So with that, I'm also going to try to darken my lights. And this way it's not going to work. Just grab the bottom one right here, and that starts dimming down your actual brightest color. And with this, I can spread that out, lighten my light, my darkest color, and we're getting a little bit closer to what we want. Um, all right, let's. Okay, I'm. I think I'm happy with that. And if you look at this, you can see the banding effect I'm talking about. Um, and I want to reduce that effect. I really don't like it. Uh, so this is going to give me my color range. Though. This is going to give me my darks that I want and my lights that I'm looking for. And with that, I'm going to be okay with it. And I'm going to go back to my gradient. Actually, my paintbrush tool will be fine. 
and I'm going to hold Alt to select the center and I'm going to change it to the next to the foreground color so again you can just make sure you're also out of the uh, mask so select directly on this icon here so again I'm going to select the center pressing X will switch between these two so I'm going to get my lightest color I want and now I have my light in the dark that I need I'm just holding alt and clicking it that uh, color dabs or whatever you have currently selected and with that I'm going back to my um, gradient layer here I'm going to apply a transparency lock and do my gradient again and this way you don't have the banding effect anymore a smooth transition you maximize your uh, detail um, I'm looking at this now and uh, I might make this a little bit larger do a free transform stretch just a bit that's small enough that I don't think I'll have too much of an issue okay now that I have this uh, these corners are still a bit harsh so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a highlight on the trim so it's more like when light hits it it just kinda rides across the corner it'll look pretty cool so I'm gonna control click on the selection make a new layer and this time I'm just gonna right click go to stroke see this little box that pops up I'm gonna change my color to pure white let me change my pixel width to 2 2 or 3 would be okay I'll just use 2 for now and with that I've just made a stroke right here uh, control D to deselect your current selection and what I want to do is I want to blur this highlight around here so go to filter blur Gaussian I'm going to pull this back a bit, it's a little bit strong so with that I'm okay then take my opacity and just pull that down until I get something that I, I need and that looks that looks okay and if you don't want to use opacity that's fine you could also apply a um, a hue saturation so control U will give you hue saturation that allows you to just take your your lights and just pull that back down so it's not brighter. But I, I like using the opacity method because it's non destructive. I can always pull it back up, pull it back down. And let's say I'm happy with that slight highlight there. I'm going to view and just hide my extras. And this is our key. It's pretty simple, nothing all that grand. But it'll give you a significantly better effect once you start actually using it. And if you need it to be darker, we can always darker, darken it right through here. My hue saturation is darken that a bit if I want to change that. I think I'm a bit happy with the way it works. Now that I have my key, I can just go to edit and uh, define brush preset. Now call this key. Okay. Now if I were to make a new texture, let's say uh, it's a 1024 by 1024. I can use my brush. And if I right click. If you go all to the bottom, I'll see that there is a new brush, and that is the one I just made. I'm going to set my color back to black. So a simple reset to these colors is pressing D out yeah, here. So if you press D, it'll go back to black and white. If you press it down, we have ourselves a key. Next thing we need to do is go to our brush settings and change our spacing because right now when we brush across, it's a uh, very well it's not really spaced out enough and they kind of, kind of lay on top of each other our goal is to have it so whenever I put them right next to each other it kind of looks like that so let's uh, go back and uh, the shortcut for brushes is um, F5 you can also find them on the side or over here if you click on that you can see your brush presets and your settings so what I'm going to do now is change my spacing so on the top brush tip shape I'm just going to click on the arrow here and just drag it a bit until it looks like the spacing is exactly right next to each other. There we go. I'm going to make my brush a little bit smaller. And I'm just going to click and hold shift and drag. And you can see how well it works. It's almost um, photoreal when you really look at it this way. And you can make your next one just offset it however you want it to be. Let me click off again and just hold shift. 
and there you go. It's pretty easy. So with that being said, I uh, hope that was useful. Gives you an idea of how um, to make a keyboard. And some of these effects work better when they're together. You can really see uh, the dip inside it. And in a way, it almost looks like as if it's just raised right here instead. Uh, it's entirely up to you how you want to look at it. Um, I hope this video was useful for you guys. And I'm sorry if I glossed over some of the details, but this is mainly made for my students uh, who will not be having class this uh, Monday that's coming up for Martin Luther King. All right.